It is not every day a bike like the Ninja H2 is unleashed because they hold the power to start a category of motorcycles, a new trend and also change the fortunes of the manufacturers for the better or the worse. The moment I first saw the Ninja H2 at EICMA in 2014, it blew my mind like millions of other bikers around the world, of course. The track-only version, the H2R, were first released and then the road going H2. It is then a lot of people probably thought that this is the bike they were waiting for and they didn't even know it. Only the best products can create a demand and a desire out of thin air. Kawasaki had also nailed the tagline. Built beyond belief. When industry first on a production motorcycle like the paint that uses a special process to integrate pure silver. In these years, it has become a fabled machine, topping the charts of the fastest production street legal motorcycle in the world. In blogs, vlogs, and other peculiar places, big and small. From adorning posters, collectibles to magazine covers and movie superstars. And it's fast not because of its silver paint, but because of the supercharger, which they crammed into it. Finding a solution to manage all that heat and translate all those insane rotations into usable power that propels the bike into insane speeds rather quickly. And because of the overall crowning achievement of such technology and a rather fresh take on the outer design of the motorcycle, this bike deserved the Kawasaki River mark on its forehead. This is the mark of Kawasaki Heavy Industries Group, dating back to the 1870s, and it can only be used on products with historical significance. Kawasaki already knew that they would create history with the H2, and so they did. And so like many of us out there, I also started dreaming from my first ride of it in 2015 in India for a few kilometers to riding it around the continent in 2017. And to taking the bike around India for 10,000 kilometers on a road trip in summer. This is the second time I'm riding this motorcycle. Last time I rode it was in Delhi. And although I'm only riding it on public roads, this bike needs one straight head of a road to actually show what it's got and it's got a lot of punch, a lot of power, a lot of technology and a lot of hype and it lives up to that. Everything about this bike I think is just amazing. This bike can actually re redefine what Superbike means, the Ninja H2. It never ceases to amaze me every time I swing my legs on it, every darn time I switch it on, every darn time I twist a throttle which scares me. Every darn time I get off the bike and admire how beautiful it is. Like the Rocket 3, there is no alternative to the magic of the Ninja H2. In 2017, I decided to do something which probably no one had done before on an H2. Ride an entire continent. 20,000 kilometers around Australia on these two beautiful machines. Australia was the perfect choice because I was familiar with the country having done close to 100,000 kilometers there on different kind of motorcycles. But before that, I wanted to make things a bit more extreme. 
I got the H2 flashed up till a point where it doesn't void the warranty and the dyno showed it was producing 257 rear wheel horsepower. That is a lot of power. Which probably meant that I was making close to 275 PHP at the crank. In fact, I got so inspired by the H2 that I decided to create a custom one-off helmet by doing an additive design, 3D printing process over a real helmet, and a back too. All said and done, it was a lot of fun. Here I must say a bit about my main supporters for that ride. Castrol is the recommended and official oil for Kawasaki H2 in Australia. And in retrospect, I have to say, it did an incredible job keeping the bike cool. If you think India is hot, then you should try doing Western and Northern Australia in their summers. And not only I did 20,000 kilometers on that, I also got an Iron Bird certificate. I'm not after certificates, but it was something for the keeps. 1650 kilometers in less than 17 hours on the H2. Just how important heat management is for the bike is evident from the usage of a special heat resistant alloy called Inconel for the exhaust walls and the fact that the trellis frame allows for better engine cooling. The Ninja H2 also has almost 35% more oil volume, a total of 5 liters, than a normal 1000cc engine because it is managing heat in the supercharger, the transmission and the engine components. It has also got a lot of tech you can talk about. From the impeller, which rotates at 130,000 RPM when the crankshaft is at 14,000 RPM, to the aluminum airbox in which the air pressure increases to almost 2.4 times the atmospheric pressure. From the intercooler-less supercharger created by Kawasaki's aerospace company to the Kawasaki racing team which helped develop the unique gearbox with dog rings to make it lighter, smoother and stronger. The S2 was Kawasaki's masterpiece, a show-off of its prowess. Something which said, we can do anything. The Australia ride on the Castle Power 1 powered Ninja H2 taught me many things including the fact that you can enjoy as much as on this as on an adventure motorcycle as long as you don't plan to do too much off-road. I don't remember how many times I pulled out of a roadhouse in the remote parts of Australia doing 0 to 150 in the first gear just to hear the chirp of the supercharger. I crossed water streams, did a bit of off-road, rode into sunsets, saw stars and the Milky Way as I rode into the night and also did 300 kmph on a racetrack in one of the most isolated cities of the world. All of this in one road trip. Fast forward to 2020 end, it was time again to do something which was a bit off the norm. It was a special year as I was turning 40 and I decided to gift myself a Ninja H2 here in India. It was another dream come true. My first ride on the Ninja H2 after getting it was in the beautiful Western Ghats of Maharashtra. It was a surreal experience riding an H2 again. But this time in India, I decided to pair up the fastest bike in the world, the Ninja H2, to the world's largest capacity motorcycle, the Triumph Rocket 3. I call them the ultimate power duo. Christening the Rocket 3R as the sole rocket and the H2 as the mind ninja. And as an ode to my long time supporters, Castrol Power and Ultimate, I did the color scheme as black and gold, which surprisingly came out to be extremely photogenic in most cases, which is good for a photographer like me. But I didn't stop there. Come February 2021, 
I decided to create Road Trip United 2021, a 10,000 kilometers trip uniting different machines, including these two. And different bikers, motorcycling groups, and storytellers from around India. While everyone who rode the Rocket 3R was flabbergasted at the torque and the rideability of the machine, the same people had their socks blown off when they rode the H2. Oh my god, oh my god! No words, no words! What a feeling, guys! Maja <laughs> aga ek dum. My God, I'm loving this. It reminded me every time what an incredible machine and tech it packs. Starting from Delhi and going east to Kolkata via Agra, Lucknow, Asansol, and Burdwan. And down to south to Kanyakumari via Bhubaneswar, Vizag, Chennai, Hyderabad, and Bengaluru. From there, we started heading back via the Nilgiris, the beautiful Mangalore Goa Highway, and into Goa and Mumbai. From there, it was a home run to Delhi through Rajasthan. During the ride, I did a preventive oil change in Hyderabad, considering the intense Indian summers. So far, I have been on Castrol Power and Ultimate for all my stints with the Ninja H2 in India, which is a full synthetic oil. And considering that we are back after the grueling 10,000 km on a bike like the H2, it does seem to have done its job pretty well. A job which can be divided into five key responsibilities. Giving excellent acceleration at all times, protecting the complex innards of the engine, the transmission and the supercharger, enduring performance day after day on the trip, ensuring that the ride comes across as smooth every time, and last but not the least, keeping that gem of an engine cool. The Kawasaki Ninja H2 that I ride is actually a successful attempt to continuing the terrifying legacy of the original Kawasaki H2, which was first launched in 1972. It was the world's fastest bike back then, with 750cc and 74bhp 3-cylinder 2-stroke madness. And when you are on such a motorcycle, it is but impossible for you not to have a bit of fun. The same craziness is carried forward. And no matter what technology comes later, the current Ninja H2 shall reign in the hearts of millions for decades to come. <laughs>